why, I guess is the big question. Why did it take 17 years for a book that would seem to be a natural drama, spectacle, young adult interest? Well, first of all, young adult interest. Um, that's a new phrase. Um, that wasn't as big a phrase 17 years ago. Um, so that's A. B, this is a movie that doesn't fit in a box. Uh, it doesn't have just one quadrant. It's, it's not just for one set of people. Um, and it has really very powerful themes um, and ideas and emotions, as well as being a fun summer blockbuster. And try to explain that to studio heads, because I did that a lot. Um, and we found ourselves across town trying to tell people how we could do this, and nobody quite grasping it. So I would think that's the reason. But you know, Philip and I say that you know, had it happened back then, we wouldn't have had Odea, because she wouldn't have been born yet. <laughs> um, I think one of the key reasons for it finally getting up was that uh, Jeff became viable again after he won the Academy Award. He became a real asset at the box office. Um, so, and then he brought with him, uh, he attracted Meryl. Uh, so suddenly you had uh, two heavyweight acting champions, world heavyweights um, uh, champions, and uh, that allowed the project to go ahead. Well, I think it was the traditional, uh, you know, finally what pushed it over the edge was th that traditional piece of casting. Plus, I mean, let's face it, um, Kids Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> Harvey's kids read the book, but Harvey is a guy who bets on some strange horses, you know, <laughs> and he succeeds. When did you? Because he again? grabs the middle ground, yeah. the ground that nobody else wants to take. <laughs> Harvey gave me the book. Uh, I read it. I thought, wow, you know, this uh, is sort of a combination of. Uh, the movies that I've loved making, both the studio films like Clear and Present Danger through to Rabbit Proof Fence, um, even stole a shot from Rabbit Proof Fence, the one from above where he's going through the desert. It was a book of ideas. It hit me that in a place that I was really worried about, which, wha which I think is the also the reason why this uh, dystopian f fiction and films have been a success, and that is, you know, that I, I, I embrace technology, or it embraces me, mm. um, but, and, and it's a gift, but it's the gift I, that I think stealing from us. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I, when I read the book, I thought, wow, it really captures that, that feeling that something's been stolen, mm -hmm. that the one word text uh, is not the same as the three sentence phone call or the person to what's person a phone call? exactly yeah. what's a phone call i saw that philip noyce was directing it i saw that jeff bridges was starring and producing in it i don't think meryl was attached yet but i saw that it was based on the book by lois i read the script and immediately i just i thought this is the best thing i've ever read this is a character so complex for someone a my age has never has never even been brought to me because Fiona goes through such a journey. She she starts off being a completely different different person, and she kind of evolves into a human as th as the story goes along. And I've never been presented with a character like that. So I was I was just you know it's it was a dream. Every every aspect of of this project is a dream. If I'm not mistaken, the characters in the book are 12 years old, right? right. Why the decision to advance them to teenage them? Uh, that was probably the hardest one and, and the hardest one for us as producers uh, to do because um, certainly the, the biggest shift that there is from the book. But going to Lois's words of staying with the spirit of the story, we really felt there was so much more we could explore um, with them being 16. And you just say funny, Brenton was the one who said to us, well, Ceremony of the 12s, it's almost like 12th grade. It's, it's high school. And we really felt that in a community where injections take everything away, where you can't feel, being able to see that uh, in a little bit of an older age group was going to be give us more opportunity filmically to explore. Um, and we felt like also would open this 
project and this book up to a much wider audience, which is something that we wanted to do. Odea, were there challenges for you acting from the beginning to the end, semi-robotically almost, and then fully alive? I don't think it was ever robotic or... Well, that, that's there, too yeah, harsh a yeah, word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, because Unfeeling. when reading it, I was thinking, how are we going to be? Or is, are we going to like move differently? Are we going to eat differently? Is this going to be really static? Like, what? how are these people going to act in the beginning? And... Um, I think we just we held it back in the beginning because we're still we still are human beings and we don't have emotion but I feel like with every character you can't help it but there is something there is something that's a little bit there you know Asher does tell jokes Fiona does seem caring there's little things in there and with Phil I think I wasn't sure how my character would develop until I saw the final um the final cup because some takes he would say, okay, no, take it all inside, take it all inside. Some takes he would say, look at Jonas with so much love, look at him with anger. And then we would do a wide range of takes for, for every single scene. And then I think the way you cut it together in the beginning, it is all the takes were, were, were more composed and, and more kind of naive and happy. And then towards the end, you use the stronger takes that we did that day.